Hey folks, Rich here at rcinformer.com. Thanks for stopping by checking out uh, this video on the uh, LX Models 1200mm Folding Wing Corsair from uh, Banana Hobby. Uh, again, this is part two of a three-part series. Uh, there is an unboxing video and a flight demo. I'll put the links at the end if you haven't seen those already. Uh, this is going to be sort of a, a review, sort of slash tips building stuff. There's really not a whole lot of building to this airplane. Uh, it comes pretty much just the way you see it, which is uh, really pretty sweet. Uh, only four wing screws to put the wings on, four screws to get the entire tail on. And the thing is pretty much uh, just the way you can see it, you, just the way you see it. You see the la it's got uh, nav lights on the wing tips, landing lights on the wings, tail light, folding wings, retractable landing gear, retractable tail wheel. Uh, it's just a really, it's really amazing the detail uh, that this airplane has for a 1200 uh, millimeter uh, Corsair and, and really how well it flies. Let me go ahead and cycle the wings so you can take a look at them. All right, really sweet mechanism, folks. This thing comes out of the box uh, and does uh, this wing folding operation just the way you see it. It's pretty impressive, uh, and it uh, seems to be a pretty sturdy wing design. Let me go ahead and fold the wings back down again. All right, very sweet, folks. Now let me go ahead and uh, extend the flaps for you so you can get an idea how the flaps come down. You can put a slow down mechanism if you if you in them if you want, but uh, it really doesn't need it. Um, again, this this video is going to be uh, really more review. I do have some building tips and some suggestions for this thing, but mostly it really does just go together uh, without too much additional work. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the features that it has. All right, in order to give everybody more of a close-up of uh, what this thing looks like and how it operates, I decided to pretty much hold this thing up right in front of the camera and uh, show you how everything works. Now, here's the uh, wing mechanism, how it, how it comes from the factory. They did a really nice job in rigging the wiring, wiring everything up, uh, wiring everything up with this uh, cable guard to kind of keep everything all compact. I'm going to go ahead and extend the wing for you. You can see how the motor runs this jack screw right through and uh, it really works uh, pretty nicely. Super nice design. I'm real impressed with this thing. Gear, wings, servos, everything comes rigged just the way you see it. You don't really need to do uh, much of anything to it. It's just very impressive for a, a 1200 millimeter airplane uh, to have this kind of detail and rigging. Let me go ahead and uh, fold up the wings again. You can see how nicely that motor drives that jack screw through and folds up the wings nicely. Very impressive and uh, a pretty uh, solid design. Again, folks, uh, right out of the box, pretty much just like this. Now, the next thing I want to show you is the uh, retractable landing gear. Both uh, main gears, doors, tail wheel, and doors all operate, and it's really impressive. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. You can see how servo drives the doors open, folds the landing gear in, and closes up the doors. Very cool, guys. Very clean design. Uh, really impressive. And again, this is, uh, this is right out of the box. Let's go ahead and extend those again. It's almost like a real airplane, the way this thing is designed and the, uh, the detail that this thing has. Very, very cool. Now onto the tail wheel. I'll see if I can show you this thing operate. Um, there is a tail hook on this thing. I removed it uh, for obvious reasons. I really don't want to snag things on the runway, but you can see the scale detail uh, in this wheel. Uh, they all have suspension in them, uh, even the main wheels. Um, have, uh, have these uh, compression oleos, so there's lots of spring in them. Uh, but uh, the tail wheel is just about as scale uh, as, as it can get. Let's go ahead and uh, extend or retract that for you.
All right, you see that door closes right over it. Very cool and very, very, very scale, folks. Go ahead and put that down again. All right, very, very cool. And you can see it has the uh, steerable tail wheel as well. And again, this is all rigged up uh, with cables and everything. Uh, and it's just really overall, folks, uh, just a real, uh, real impressive uh, package. The only thing that you have to do as far as horns go, all the horns are put onto the wings on this thing, uh, is to put the, uh, the tail horns uh, on for the uh, elevator and for the rudder. You can see the, uh, the tail light that's, uh, that's back here. Um, what I did notice is that uh, when installing these, there is a blade uh, part of this horn that actually goes down into, there's a recessed area, and I found that uh, this bottomed out actually uh, before the, uh, the flat surface actually contacted the surface of this thing. So it's not a bad idea to take a hobby knife when you put this thing on and just go down into that trench, because there is a trench down into the foam here, and just cut about a millimeter or two into that. Uh, and that will allow this horn to seat down in there nicely. I also put a dab of contact cement on there before I put this on and, uh, and put the, the uh, screws on. But uh, anyway, folks, um, that is, uh, that's really it for the features on this thing. Now let me go ahead, go ahead and show you a few things you can do to the airplane to improve it a little. Uh, it doesn't need any of these items, but uh, these are some of the things I did to my model um, to make it a little bit tougher. Now for security purposes, I would highly recommend putting just a small piece of fuel tube on all the clevises. This is something that uh, actually LX models uh, did not provide, but it's a real good idea uh, to put those on there. Uh, it just really keeps those clevises uh, from coming off. I put them on all of the clevises on this airplane, uh, wing and tail, and it's uh, definitely a really, uh, really good way to go. Now taking a look here inside the, uh, the cockpit of this thing, um, you can decide whether you want to put the, uh, the antennas on here or not. I put them on for scale detail. Uh, they're a little bit of a pain in the neck getting the canopy on and off, and you tend to tear this antenna out of the, uh, the cockpit. But, uh, but that's really personal preference whether you want to have the, uh, the antennas on or not. Uh, here's the inside layout uh, of my cockpit. Uh, I went ahead and put uh, uh, Velcro on the battery to keep it in place because there's really not a lot of room for a strap there or anything. Uh, but you can see I have my, uh, my Futaba receiver just uh, nicely Velcroed right down in here. Uh, my separate BEC Velcroed right here. And then all the control boards, the uh, landing gear control board, um, doors board, uh, light board, all that stuff is just uh, really just, I just pushed right underneath here um, to get everything um, into place. Um, for those of you that want to remove the wing, um, those little connectors, those multi-connectors to get the wings uh, on and off, um, uh, you know, you don't really need it with this airplane. Uh, this airplane, uh, the wings fold up and you can just put it right in your car, which is one of the beauties of it. Now, one thing that I would suggest adding to this airplane uh, that for some reason was not on mine, I don't know if it was something that the factory missed or if it was something they just decided not to put on, but you see the carbon spar. I ran a quarter inch carbon spar, uh, uh, 0.25 inch carbon spar, uh, all the way back. And what it was is there was a trench there for it. And you can see it goes pretty far forward. I just cut the right length that I needed and took some contact cement. And I just contacted it and cemented it in place. Now I noticed that when I moved the, the nose of this plane up and down, uh, the fuselage did flex a bit. So, you know, I don't know if they intended to put a carbon spar in here or not. Um, if they did, well, they, they forgot to put it in mine. But I don't know. I, you know, I really don't know whether or not it was meant to be in there or not. But uh, after I put the carbon spar in there with contact cement, and there's one on each side, as you can see here, um, the fuselage is much, much stiffer. So it's probably not a bad idea just to put a carbon rod in there. Again, mine was a quarter inch. You could probably use one that's, um, you know, even uh, a little less diameter. Uh, but it fit in there nicely. It makes the model uh, much more rigid. As previously mentioned, uh, the horns on this airplane have this, uh, this little sort of um, uh, tapered knife edge here that actually fits. Uh, down into a notch uh, that's right in the middle of this thing. And what I found was is the, uh, the trench is not nearly, or the notch is not nearly deep enough to accommodate this thing, and it sort of bottoms out and doesn't sit flush down in there. Now, rather than just pressing it in there and, you know, kind of denting up the foam, it's not a bad idea to take a hobby knife and just cut down into that trench about a millimeter or two only, really just to break the surface. Uh, and then you'll find that this, uh, this knife edge will just plug right into there, and then this whole horn will recess down in there uh, really nicely. At that point, uh, I'll put a little contact cement on here, 
uh, on this knife blade area and then push it down in there, put your screws on, and that will ensure that this thing is really well secured uh, to the airplane. Just a few small suggestions I have for the nose section of this airplane is really just to balance the, uh, the propeller here. Uh, I found mine was a little out of balance and it's pretty common practice for some, most airplanes to just check that they're balanced. I had to sand away a little bit of one of them to get it to balance up, uh, but it's really a small thing. Real nice design on the cowling, comes off with four screws. It's not glued on, so four screws take this thing off and you can easily get into the uh, motor and the ESC compartment. Now what I would suggest doing here, uh, the ESC is just glued down to a, sort of down to the table there and air can flow over it nicely. I went ahead and put a hobby knife in there, removed the glue and just pulled the ESC out a little ways. And then with a hobby knife, just cut the covering off of the heat sink side, not the other side, just the heat sink side. So it exposes those uh, heat sink louvers. It'll make the ESC cool much better. And then put it back in there, just kind of glue it on with some contact cement uh, and get it as far forward as you can. Uh, because the plane uh, really really helps to have the, the weight as far forward as you can on this. I found the CG balances real nicely, but just remove this heat shrink wrapping. That thing will cool much better. Also, using some sort of fiber tape or tape that does not flex very much. You can see I, I fiber taped these, uh, these wires uh, back a little bit to keep them away from the spinning motor housing, and that's not a bad idea uh, just to keep those away from that. Now, when it comes to the CG on the LX uh, Corsair, I found that the 78 millimeter mark that they recommend was a little bit too far aft. The plane did fly uh, right out of the box this way, uh, balanced at that mark, uh, but it was a little bit, I thought, thought too pitch sensitive, especially at high speed. So I uh, shifted mine forward, added a little nose weight, shifted it to 65 millimeters, and the whole flight demo that you saw was, uh, was flown right there. And, and, and again, the plane flew fantastic at that mark. Now, uh, looking at the wing with a ruler set up here, uh, it'll give you an idea of where that mark exactly is. Now, 78 millimeters is right back here somewhere, but uh, as you can see, 65 is right on the center of this wing folding mechanism, this little seam right there. That's really just a, a good guide. So uh, you want to balance the airplane with the uh, landing gear in the up position uh, because uh, the landing gear on this plane uh, does shift backwards. So if you balance it here and then retract your gear, it, the, gear, the gear will shift back and your CG is going to shift back a little bit. So you want to balance it with the gear up the way it's going to be flying. And when you put your gear down, the, the gear will uh, move forward and the CG will move forward even a little bit, uh, a little bit more. Now, keep in mind uh, by shifting the CG forward like this, it does make the plane a little bit nose heavy, especially when you're taxing on grass and the tail will bounce around a little bit and the plane does have a tendency to nose over a bit, so you want to be careful taxing uh, if you shift your CG uh, forward like this. Now, the way I added uh, uh, weight to mine was just putting some press-on weights here that I got from uh, Harbor Freight Tools. These are just uh, steel weights. You can see uh, one, two, three, four ounces total, and they just stick in there, and then this cowling fits nicely uh, back on the, uh, the airplane like that. So um, uh, now you may want to use a heavier battery or weight, whatever you need to use. But, but again, I did find that 65 millimeters was a really great flying uh, CG for this uh, LX Models Corsair. Here's one last look at the Corsair from the uh, rear quartering view. I wanted to show you the uh, flaps in a little bit uh, uh, greater detail here. You can see as I extend my flaps, uh, all three segments uh, come down together. Uh, keep in mind that this plane, I know from talking with folks online, that um, it comes rigged sometimes uh, one of two ways. Either like this with all three flap segments and the two flap servos running the flaps and just a single aileron, or one servo for the flaps driving these two flaps and then these two running as ailerons. Now the plane, I think, from the factory was set up to be either way. Uh, you get better controllability out of the airplane with two ailerons running and two flaps, but it's not quite scale uh, the way that this is. So um, the way I have mine set up is one, two, three, four flap servos are all hooked up to a quadruple Y harness that came with the airplane. Um, it came rigged the other way, meaning that these two servos here uh, for the aileron and that flap and this aileron and that flap were actually rigged to the quadruple harness and then these two flap servos were actually on a Y harness. So I had to reverse mine in order to get the scale flaps to actually work. So it's really gonna be a personal preference of how you like to fly your model, whether you really want the two ailerons working or you want the three flaps working. Uh, it's personal preference uh, and, it's, and, it's, and it's really uh, your call how you wanna set this thing up. Um, 
if you do get yours with the two flap panels working and the two ailerons working and you want to go to scale flaps again just take that quadruple Y harness hook these four up but what you're going to have to do is um, reverse one of them because um, um, the two flaps on one side are reverse servos and two flaps on the other are not so one will actually run the opposite direction if you hook them all up to the quadruple Y harness so what you can do is take that fourth servo if you have a spare channel plug it into a spare channel and mix it in with the other three servos electronically and you'll get all four flaps to come down or you have to add a reverse servo or put a reverser on it uh, a little inline reverser so there's a lot of different ways that you can do that if you want to do that so really it's personal preference on the flaps whether you want to have two working flaps and two working ailerons or three working flaps and one aileron like it is here in the scale uh, configuration. Um, anyway guys, that uh, pretty much uh, concludes uh, this video on the uh, LX Models Corsair from Banana Hobby, so uh, check it out there. It really is a very sweet model. It's very intense that the detail this has for such a small airplane with the folding wings, the flaps, the retractable gear and doors and the lighting package on the airplane. It all makes for really a spectacular model. Uh, anyway, guys, be sure to check out the other two links. I'll put them at the end for the flight demo and the unboxing of this airplane. Uh, as always, thanks for checking out RC Informer, and we'll see you next time.